this is the TXT and this is a new series for the channel. At some point of your life you have probably done this, right? But what actually happened here? Well, I just joined a Minecraft server of course, but how does that really work? Maybe you have already written a Minecraft server plugin before and learned a bit about how a Minecraft server works behind the scenes. The problem with writing plugins is that it's boring. I really want to know what's going on and for that I embarked on a great journey writing my own Minecraft server from scratch. And I'm using Rust, of course. Writing your own Minecraft server is actually quite simple. All you need to do is to write some code to receive, pass and send TCP packets in accordance to the Minecraft protocol, keep track of everything, compute some stuff and that's it. If you struggle to understand what a protocol is, then I really recommend you to watch this video from Live Overflow. It's also linked in the video description. Minecraft also has a protocol. It's just not really officially documented by Mojang. However, I found this really helpful wiki. It contains the full reverse engineered protocol specification and tons of other information that is vital to what I'm trying to do. I'm still relatively early in the process, so the only thing that is really working is the server list ping. I mean, what else do you really need? I'm still working on the whole joining thing, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. So let's take a look at how the server list ping works. To understand the specifics of the server list ping, we first need to take a look at the single packets that make up every communication in the Minecraft protocol. Ignoring some legacy crap, all packets look the same. They start with the length of the entire packet in bytes. Paradoxically, this length doesn't include itself, only the rest of the packet. After that comes the packet ID. There are quite a few different kinds of packets and this ID tells us what exactly we are dealing with. The rest of the packet is simply the actual data. This depends on what kind of packet we are looking at. There is also another variable that is very important but nowhere to be found in the packet itself. It's the current state of the connection. All connections start off in the handshaking state. Throughout the future communication the connection state can be changed to a few others. Implementing a simple packet parser still requires another piece. We need to figure out how the two fields length and packet ID are actually encoded. We are dealing with bare ones and zeros here, so how do we convert that to actual numbers? The wiki tells us something more specific actually. It says those numbers are in the var int format. To understand var ints, you first need to understand regular ints. Actually, let's take a step back. This is a single byte. It's made up of 8 individual bits. We can use these bits to store numbers like so. With a single byte, we can encode numbers from 0 to 255, or if we care about negative numbers too, we can encode negative 128 to 127. That's not really a lot, so we can use multiple bytes together for encoding larger numbers. The default is using 4 bytes, which can deal with numbers from about negative 2 billion to positive 2 billion. As a Minecraft server, we are often dealing with relatively small numbers. Relatively small numbers that also could be a lot larger sometimes. This means that most of the time we would only use 1 or 2 bytes for our number, wasting quite a bit of space. And wasting space is really bad when you send data over the network. Saving every byte possible is generally very worth it. That's why we have var ints. These just use as many bytes as necessary. Looking at just a bunch of ones and zeros, we of course have no reference where one piece of data starts and where it ends. That's why we need to somehow indicate how long a var int is. To do this, the most significant bit is used as an indicator. If it's a 1, the next byte also belongs to the var int. If it's a zero, this is the last byte. With this information, we can already start to decode the first packet the client sends us. The first byte is of course the beginning of the length field. Doing the conversion to decimal tells us this is a 16. Now let's count the rest of the bytes to check if this is correct. And yes indeed, it is 16 bytes long. The next number is very simple to decode, it's of course a zero. As this is the first packet, we are still in the handshaking state and the packet ID we just determined is zero. With this information, we can look up the packet specific documentation. All right, this tells us that the next field is the protocol version, which again is a var int. This time, the most significant bit is a one, so we need to take a look at the next byte as well. Once we piece it together, we get the answer. 760. This basically tells us the version of the client. If it uses a protocol version that we don't know, then we can't communicate because we might be talking a different language. There are generally only slight differences between protocol versions, but even they can seriously mess everything up. 
that's why your client doesn't let you join servers that run a different Minecraft version. Some small version upgrades might use the same protocol version however, and in this case you can still play on the server. Now comes the server address. It is encoded as a string. Strings are very simple. They start out with a var int telling us the number of characters. Every character is then encoded using UTF-8 as a single byte. Okay, so the var int seems to be a 9, telling us we have to convert the next 9 bytes to UTF-8. Would you look at that? That's the IP I used to connect to the server. Now follows the port. This time it's not a var int, it's just a basic unsigned short. This means 2 bytes and no negative nonsense. This results in 25565, the port I used to connect to the server. Now there's only a single byte left. This tells us what the client wants from us. If it's a 2, then the client wants to log in. In this case, it's just a 1. This means the client wants our status. With this, we change the connection state to status and wait for further communication from the client. Now the client can send two different packets, the status request or ping request packet. The status request packet has the ID 0 and the ping request the ID 1. To the status request, the server sends the status response packet. It includes a string with some beautiful JSON containing some information about the server, like the message of the day, player count and limit and so on. In the ping request, the client also sends a number. In the ping response, we just return that. This is so the client knows which ping request we are responding to. That's actually it. Quite simple, right? Well, let me tell you that the whole joining thing is a bit more complicated, but we will get to that soon enough. This is the part where you should subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next part. See you then.